Good afternoon, everyone. We are going to continue with the book of Joana de Angelis that we are studying. We are, uh, the book is Alert by the Spirit Joana de Angelis, psychographed by the medium Divaldo Pereira Franco. And today we are going to see um, the topic. We are going uh, all the book and today's chapter 10. Uh, and the chapter 10 is Genesis of Suicide, which is very appropriate and it's, uh, <laughs> it's actually a coincidence. <laughs> it was not planned to, do, to be this way, but we are going to be talking about suicide on September, yellow September, where we are always, uh, you know, trying to help each one to value life and to remember that it's a, a month there there is this worldwide campaign for suicide prevention um and this chapter in particular it's very very important because she's going to talk about the origins of emotions that may lead us to dismay in relation to life okay so we are going to be start reading it and then we will comment the sadness that you nurture takes you to an internal mortification which you cannot free yourself it is a destructive factor and the foundation of your personality. The bitterness, bitterness which you preserve like an acid that corrodes the fabrics of your emotions establishes a newness that soon will result in conquering your resistances. The methodical rebelliousness, the one that is binding you, will transform your your intensely cherished aspiration into residues of unhappiness and endless torment. You face the problems that manifest in your day-to-day -day life, reacting with irritation and desperation, which establishes matrices of afflictions that will lead you to self-destruction. A suicide is not the only one who, propelled by the perplexity of their emotions, throws themselves from a cliff resulting in physical destruction. Okay, so here she's talking about sadness, bitterness, rebelliousness, everything that leads us to irritation, to despair, and how this can increase affect us in our state of being, our moods. And uh, she ends this first part by saying that we should reconsider the word suicide when referring to people. A suicide, a person that commits suicide is not only that one that will on the heat of the emotions just end their lives but it can be someone that is constantly giving themselves to those kind of destructive emotions and um, it may be obvious to us that have been talking about this for so long and we are familiar with the works, especially on the, 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 the field of uh, psychology, spiritual psychology of Joana de Angelis, but to many people, they may not be that much aware of the intensity of damage that their unbalanced emotions can cause and can uh, lead them to, you know, to, even to the act itself, but uh, to other side effects 
like how much this is going to impact our health, our mood, our relationships, everything else. So this is why she's calling our attention saying, you need to identify that. You need to address that. And not ju just put aside thinking that things are going to solve by themselves. Because the thing is, when we start having those kind of emotions constantly, they no longer are the result of things that are happening to us. They become a habit. We, we feel like this because we feel like this. I mean, even if we do not have a, a direct reason uh, for that, we will feel this way. Uh, because life is not worth living, because people in general are, are not nice, because, you know, we start looking for excuses that will prevent us to change ourselves. A happy person doesn't need the word, world to be happy, happy people around them. It's always more related to our inner emotions. As much as, you know, we can see in a household, people that live exactly the same kind of life, some are super happy and others are super sad. How can we explain that if it is not by our inner disposition? Okay, so this is established. We know we will have that every now and then. And uh, we have to address it uh, to ourselves. It's not that I have to go out in the world and say, oh, I'm a bitter person. I'm a rebellious person. I'm sad all the time. No, I mean, we have to start paying attention at ourselves. Uh, it is hard for us to face us. Perhaps that is the reason why we find it much more interesting to be analyzing others, to be looking at the lives of others, to be fantasizing in our heads that everyone else is living a much better life than we, we are, or just criticizing others because we do not want to take the step of looking at ourselves. Any question or comment? Today is hard. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is just the beginning. <laughs> Orlando had something. Yeah, there. Let me see if I can get there. Sometimes it's hard for me to get there with my screens all. Uh, it has to do when the spirit is incarnated in a physical body that the colonel is able to experience pain. Well, Orlando, yes and no. I mean, it's not only because we are in a physical body, calling ourselves human, that we are able to experience pain. We have enough reports from the spirit world saying that they feel pain there as well. It may not be exactly the same kind of physical pain, but here on earth, many times, what is stresses us mostly, it's not just the physical pains, it's the emotional pains. It's the pain of ingratitude, the pain of solitude, uh, and so many other pains, uh, the, the pain of being ignored, of being uh, suffered, suffering from injustice. So there are many emotional pains that uh, are the same when we are talking about uh, the spirit world. And, uh, and, and again, it's always the result of our inner disposition of how we feel, how much importance we are giving you know, to, to think sometimes, yeah, we do need to give, a, a, to pay attention to what others are saying of, or thinking in relation to ourselves, but sometimes we don't. And, um, 
And so we are not going to change this dynamics just because we no longer belong to the physical realm and now we are in the spiritual realm. And that's what causes us to feel pain, the pain of remorse, regret, the pain of guilty. I mean, it's horrible to feel the pain of guilty when we know that, uh, I mean, we, we, we did something or we didn't do something that could be so helpful because it's not just not a matter of doing, it's a matter sometimes of not doing. And uh, so this is important as well. Anyone else would like to say something or should we go ahead? Okay. This melancholy that searches your frame of mind within the fabrics of depression is a sign of alarm that you cannot disregard. This aggravating affliction that dominates your nervous system invites you to change your attitude, which you must not delay. That which consumes you, disappearing and reappearing in a new configuration is a challenge that you must face with the stoicism to get out of disharmony. You must repel the thousand little injunctions against your emotional and mental health before you are caught in the misfortune fortune of unjustified and hasty discarnation. So here, it's very important for us to talk about, uh, to distinguish things here. Here's Juana de Angelis talking about sadness, depression, that represents a state of mind, whether justified or not. She is not talking about the illness. She's not talking about a pathological situation of people who are suffering depression because of chemical imbalances on the brain. In any case, when we are feeling these depressive moods, not being certain whether it's a depressive mood or is it a clinical uh, pathological situation, we should always look for you know, a doctor to be rightly diagnosed if this is the case to find four ways to counteract the chemical imbalances that may be occurring. But most of the time, uh, and particularly in this situation here, Juana de Angelis is not addressing the illness per se, but she's addressing the burden of being uh, an inferior spirit. So she's talking about the challenges that us as immortal spirits is still on a lower level of evolution will have when dealing with situations that are around us or inside of us. Remember that we are not a blank plate. We bring so much from our past that many times is mostly in our subconscious level, and, but it still impacts us somehow. I mean, it's like uh, I feel fear. I don't know why, but that, that must be something related to my past or some, uh, uh, not necessarily a spiritual persecution, it's just, uh, it's just us. So this is why she's trying to say, okay, we do understand that on this level of involvement, we normally are like a volcano of emotions. And of course, most of them 
not necessarily good and um, emotions, but we have to take control of them. We cannot allow them to be like the untamed horse that will drive the, the chariot of our lives. We can find a way like she sees here. It sometimes disappear and reappears in a new configuration. You must face that with a stoic uh, uh, attitudes in order to get out of the disharmony. It's not going to be easy for us to control, to take the control of our emotions. But this is what we have to do. Again, we are not talking about the clinical aspect of all this turmoil of emotions, melancholy, depression, etc. We are talking about our frame of mind. And, um, and sometimes it's both all together. We have the chemical imbalances and we do have a tendency also to see the world without colors. And this is hard. Question, comments? Uh, do obsessive spirits are in some way responsible for the, for the suicide person? Yes, Orlando, we may say that in many cases of suicide, there will be also the presence of uh, adversaries from the past, but we always have to remember that um, they can try to induce us to certain actions, but ultimately it is still under our control to accept or not their suggestions. No one is saying that is easy when we are talking about this level of spiritual disturbance inner spiritual disturbances to not let their influence uh, be stronger. Uh, but, uh, but still, we cannot blame on the, we cannot blame the spirits on that uh, because in the first place, we have to understand also the genesis, the origin on how, why the spirits are there trying to induce us to end our lives in the first place. I mean, they just, just they don't just single us out and say, you know what, eh, I like this, you know, blonde girl. I'm going to go after her and make her, her die. It doesn't happen like this. There has to be history. And history that I, in my previous behaviors, should have prevented. Okay, we cannot change the past. But we are not doing that much for the present and the future as well. So what is our excuse? That's what we have to think about. Okay, now I have to face the consequences of some spiritual interferences, but still, even if it belongs to my past that I cannot change, I can reduce to the point of eliminate their influence, their presence, completely. Again, it's never an easy problem process, but can we do it? Yes. Can we prevent us from, you know, getting into trouble today and tomorrow? Yes. Should we learn from the past? Absolutely. Uh, and this is the way we have been doing so far. 
that's why she says it's it's time to you know to hold your horses <laughs> to take control you're tired of suffering you're tired of going through this you know crazy emotions okay let's read a little more whatever may be troubling or the may be troubling or depressive factors that come to you inviting you to the cultivation of pessimism or irritability they should not find shelter in your mental frames paying an earning measure the strength of moral value in each one of us uh, Okay, let me see this. Uh, paying an earning measure, the strength. Oh, okay. Sickness and discarnation institutes a natural phenomenon in the biological process in which you are situated. Problems and difficulties represent trials that makes us grow in the direction of life. In this way, work on your mental asepsis by persevering optimism and unrestricted faith in God. So, uh, Andrea and Philip, if you could uh, perhaps uh, review this first two paragraphs here. Okay, I'll, I'll put it in the chat. Let me see. Actually, no problem. No, no problem. You can. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I read wrongly. <laughs> and uh, okay, so just this this first two here. Okay. Um. Again, she's she's saying, fight it. You have to fight it. Because life is still a challenge to us. We are still in a world of trials and atonements. Yes, changing, but still in this period of transition. Uh, we are still on the third level of the category of spirits, which is the last one. So we will find those um, balanced emotions and we will have uh, this uh, constantly coming into us but the thing is we have to fight it we cannot let it take control over us okay today is a difficult day allow yourself to rest to understand that we are not superheroes, but do not allow yourself to go down the spiral in a, in a way that it will come to a point that you will have no control of coming back. Um, the trials that we have to face, the challenges that we face in, in life, it is part of our life and we should understand it. We're not saying that we have to love it. We're just saying that we understand that it's part of the personal growth and it is not a privilege of any single person. Everyone goes through that. So we, we have two ways of dealing with that. Am I going to find a solution or am I going to look at the wrong side uh, again? I remember, uh, you know, this little story. I mean, I imagine that it's just a story, not necessarily a, a true story, but it, it could be as well. It is said that uh, a salesperson or a sales representative that worked for a shoe company was sent to India to analyze the perspective 
of uh, you know expanding their market and starting selling shoes there. So the sales representative for one company goes there and says, listen, I'm in, in India and here no one wears shoes. All of them are barefoot. I don't think it works for us to invest here. Another company sends another sales representative. He goes to India and he says, oh my God, I'm in India. Everyone here, they are barefoot. They don't have shoes. We have a huge market here. So you see, this is two completely opposite reactions for the same things. Which one is going to be us? The one that say, ah, oh, it's no worth saying there are too many wrongdoers and sinners on our earth. I'm going to give up, you know, trying to make them better or, oh my God, I have such a huge field to disseminate, you know, this love and enlightenment. Let's start because, you know, time is of the essence. Okay, we will wake up one day feeling that we are that first salesperson. Maybe the next one day we will be the second salesperson. But the thing is, we have to aim for betterment, for an optimistic attitude. Even when we find it hard, in our hearts to do it. There must be something that you can do that in the days that you're really feeling blue, that can take your mind out of, out of it. It may be to walk in the park, maybe even to sleep longer, uh, to watch a movie, to try to find someone to talk, whatever works for you, to cook, to needle, to read a book, whatever works for you, try to do it. Uh, you know, in my case, sometimes I, I, I feel tired, I feel like this way, and then I have so much work to do, and I say, oh my God, I'm not gonna be able to do this work. So I look for the easiest part of my work, the one that, you know, relax me more. Sometimes in my case is when I, I have to do the, the PowerPoint. Uh, I have to look for images and looking for the perfect template design and then I keep doing that hours in this way okay I'm not being as productive as I would like to be but I'm not uh, just giving up and doing and not doing anything that is not going to make me feel good so whatever works for you you know and uh, even allow yourself sometimes to just say no today is a bad day <laughs> tomorrow is going to be a, a a better one but today I, I will allow myself to just uh, not worry that much in being a hundred percent in control because sometimes we can't and uh it may lead us to frustration if we we insist too much but we cannot allow this to become a, a constant in our lives, okay? Any questions or comments? Okay, let's go to the next part. When life seems without objective, and you are ready to fall Renew your concepts and pray. Seek the divine inspiration, absorbing therefore the strength that will propitiate you to leave the emotional sunset. 
It will transform your problems into actions of goodwill for your brethren, finding after all that the universal language of kindness is the preventative and healing therapy for suicide and madness. So as always, Joana de Angelis start presenting the situation, goes on developing it, calling our attention to how this can affect us, what we have to do. And then she ends by saying, by giving us instruments, things that could help us in this sense. So here she's saying, when we are in this state, pray. Look at the sky or whatever, you know, and say, it's too much. I need your help. I need help. Um, when things are too hard, you can perhaps say, I, I don't know, uh, maybe I, I should stop thinking only about me and do something to others. And when we do that, uh, we engage in any kind of uh, work, we will be um, seeing this transformation. That's why in a way the motto of spiritism is without charity there is no salvation because truly when we are uh, dismaying in relation to ourselves we um, and we start doing something for others we may find solutions that we couldn't see it were right in front of us. Um, I remember one case from Stephen Hawking. Uh, it is said that when he was diagnosed with his illness, he was not given that many years of life, actually very few. And of course, as a human being, he got first through despair uh, contemplate the idea of killing himself while he could because then he would be completely impaired even to do so. But then according to what is said, he thought to, him, my, to himself, well, at least if I cannot live life for me, I will give my life to others. And it was when he started dedicating himself even more because at that point, of course, he was already a genius and aware of his intellectual uh, possibilities. And surprise, sur surprise, he leave it. I don't, I don't even remember how old he was when he died, but he lived it many decades. He defied science after that, just because he decided, he said, well, I will not have a life, but uh, whatever I have, I can give to others. I can contribute to, to others. I will do that. In his case was dedicating to science. So, and, and it's not uncommon for us to, when we are engaged in voluntary works to see people that arrive there to do volunt uh, to become a volunteer. And they say, oh my God, I arrived here in such a bad shape and now I, I'm, I feel so good just doing good, you know, because doing good makes us feel good. So whatever works for us, but one thing that we have to do is really, really fight not to allow us to become despair to the point of missing this precious gift that is life, is the life that we have. I think uh, this is it. Oh, next week we have patience. <laughs> okay, so you have to be patient until next week that we talk here. Uh, let me see here, another comment. Uh, 
Has the suicide person been reincarnated again to test if he has decided to live life? You see, Orlando, we, we all have to go through life, uh, many lives. Uh, we all have history and um, and some of us will bring a history of being a suicide in a, a previous life. Um, we all have to face our actions. A suicide will have to face their actions as well. And um, and, uh, and and yes, you know we we have to come and kind of prove to ourselves <clears throat> that we understand the value of life and we understand the purpose of uh, even pain in our lives as uh, pedagogical resource for us to start doing better and to to work on our you know on acquiring the virtues that we can let's say that it was okay to kill people um and nothing would happen what do you think at this stage of involvement that we are was going to happen if all of a sudden all the governments going there now to TV and announce, you know what? We have released it. Uh, killing people is no longer a crime. <laughs> I hope that I wouldn't become a killer at this point in my life. I don't think I will. Oh, but I tell you, there will be a line outside my door. <laughs> it will be like, you know, one of the Agatha Christie story. No, <laughs> let me get his stab as well, you know. Yeah. So there has to be some kind of punishment in a way for us to see how hard it is. and what we shouldn't be doing and engaging. I mean, oh, the life of that person doesn't matter. I, 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 I am allowed to, do, to just go there and end it. Who are we to say? And according to one, our understanding, the more we are bad, <laughs> the longer we need to live. <laughs> Right? We have a saying in Portuguese. I'm going to say in Portuguese, if I, any of you know it in English, we say that uh, um vaso ruim não quebra. A, ba a bad face, a an ugly face doesn't break. If one vase is going to break in your house, it's exactly the one that you love, not the one that you don't care about it, right? So, but that is the, the logic of the providence. You know, people, they are already in good shape. They don't need it to be on this earth that long or that much, unless they, they have decided to stay for a purpose of helping others but they don't need to be here that long, you see? So, yes, um, but we are learning. I mean, let us look at history and see how much we have advanced already. Um, it's still some uh, good actions are more a requirement than second nature to us. But okay, this is how it starts. This is how we change. Any comments or questions? I 
believe this is a blast to read these lessons then to be part of this group of stuff. Then we can open mind and understand the process. Many different psychological process happen with us. And, but and I don't know how can I help someone who doesn't know about all this lesson and keep thinking in negative way and always look at the empty part of the glass and then because it's not easy for us to look for someone with sadness and talk about God and faith and all lessons we're learning here, share with them, but they don't change because this is a process and I never know how can I help give a hand for this kind of people who choose to live in sadness. It's a very good point, Sonia, and uh, it's, it's really hard because normally when we are talking like this, we are talking a bit about people that are very close. That's why we can observe so up close, uh, you know, their reactions and their state of mind. Um, the thing is, we can't. I mean, uh, we can impose on others our way of seeing things, of understanding things. Um, we can give good examples, which is, you know, it's going, in, perhaps in the long run, but it's going to affect them. It is going to make an impact on them seeing how come, you know, things are like the way it is and you are always like, uh, you know, I, I, tell me, I want to learn to be this way as well. You know, that's why the, the, the examples are the most powerful thing. We can just offer, which doesn't mean that they are going to appreciate. It's like, you know, if you're going to offer a very exquisite plate of food to someone, uh, there are people that are able to feel and to identify all the spices, every, all the ingredients that you put it in there. Oh, I feel a hint of this or that, you know. There are others that will say, it's just meat, it's just rice, it's just food for my hungry stomach. You see, they are eating the same thing. They are being exposed to the same thing, but they do not have yet, they have not awakened their senses to understand that this is vital and then this can enrich their life so much, you know, uh, to be able to feel all the, the, and to savor all the flavors it's an extraordinary experience versus it's rice, it's potato, it's carrots, everything tastes the same. And it's just like, you know, <laughs> so I, I think the, the, that's why the idea here, every time we are talking about those lessons in spiritism that deals more with our inner aspect, they are very personal. And it's like they are saying to us, you know, take care of yourselves. Like you, they are also children of God and do not worry that their time will come. Keep up doing the good work, everything that you can do for yourselves, every good example that you can settle, share, 
but be patient and do remember that every time there, everyone has their own time. And we cannot, uh, and, and I mean, even for ourselves, come on, we know that, right? And tell me now, how hard it is for us to do what Joana D'Angeli is saying here. Right? Yeah. Today we want to be mad. I'm angry. <laughs> but I can't. Uh, uh, right? How hard it is. Even when we know, we accept, we are not fighting that this is the right thing to do. Done. And it's still, we feel so powerless. And that's why I, why I say, you know, uh, we have just to keep on doing, keep on doing it. I don't care if I, I, I couldn't do it today. I'll try to again tomorrow. I don't, I don't, uh, yes, I don't ahead. know if we don't believe, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I don't know if we don't believe or if, um, if we're just not ready, but there's, um, the, the most impressive book that I have been studying taught in life a lot is my favorite book at the moment. I have studied in the past, but probably wasn't ready. And a few years ago, when I read that one, there's one paragraph where Emmanuel says that our thoughts are not our thoughts. They're the addition of the thoughts of all incarnates and discarnate beings that are in the same, they're connected with us. And that made me so I kind of paralyzed with that uh, idea. And then I was in such a bad place and I thought, well, what if I was to actually believe in Mano and do something about it? That would be a crazy idea. So I disconnected of uh, everything negative that I was reading, news or anything else. And I had a improvement. That was in six months, I was a different person. And they had three people very close to me that noticed my improvement and asked me what I've done. And I told them, I said, but disconnected means disconnected because when you're connected, it's not that you are getting sad. You are getting what's called sadness from everyone that feeling sad or upset. It's not just about you. You, what Emmanuel says is that you are sad with everyone is an addition of sadness or depression or rebelliousness or that feeling is everyone else's feeling and that's why it's so difficult to get rid of. And one month, two months later, but you have to cut that connection. And they were, wow, they thought it was great but none of them did because, you know, I just have to check the headlines a little bit in the morning. So it didn't work. That's that what they told me later. Oh, I just have to check. But if you just check, well, you didn't disconnect completely, did you? So this is that one thing that I was able to do, okay? I'm just giving you that one example. And I did. So they tell us to do that one thing and that was actually easy to do. It was possible, not easy, but it was possible. They tell us to do possible things, and we do, and it works, and it did work. And other people asked, but they weren't capable or they didn't weren't ready to do. And it gets me thinking, how many other things that are possible and we are not doing? How many times Emmanuel tells us not to complain? Complain, complain. And not complaining is possible. Other things are not possible. Not to complain is just shut up. But can we do? I think that we don't believe in the amazing results that can come out of it. When you want to complain about something, we just don't. 
So I do believe that there's so many things that can, that we can achieve just right now doing very small things that are possible here, but we don't believe. So I've been telling people, if you completely disconnect of the news, but completely 100%, nothing will happen, I guarantee it's been months, years, I don't read or see anything. And I am com completely alive, nothing happened. I'm just happy, healthy, and working with spiritism and everything. But everyone, yeah, but, well, when you say but, it just mean you can do it. And you don't want, and it's fine. Each one is gonna do what's important for them. But the spirits are telling us possible things to do to improve our lives, and we don't. Imagine when we start to do these small things. Everyone, each one of us, the small ones, not forgiving, not becoming great people in one incarnation, these very, very small things. Imagine where we're going to be. It's, it's going to be incredible. I'm, I'm really been thinking a lot about this. Very small things that we don't, we don't listen. So as Sonia pointed out, well, they don't listen to us. We don't listen to the spirit. Yes, uh, Barbara, you see, uh, this advice, uh, you know, and this experience that you live, it's very, very important. I think it's wonderful that you share that. But we have to, to understand that not all, all formulas uh, work the same in the sense that um, um, Emmanuel is right. And uh, we have been seeing that. We see that in the Spirit's book and the Medium's book, you know, we are going to attune with the wave, wave frequency that our thoughts, our actions are. So there is no way. Uh, that's why, you know, the more we, we elevate our wavelength to the point of trying to maintain control, not to give to any kind of excessive negativity, etc., it is going to make us less prone to attune with energies that are being released in the world in the same sense. I myself, uh, I, I'm like you, I, I don't watch the news, I don't follow the news, I, I don't like it. And it's been like that for decades. I just know here and there a few headlines because I do not want to be someone that do not know anything that is happening in the world because the world is, is still not ready for that you know a person that may seem to be that much indifference to the the to the everything that is happening but you see i rem while you were talking okay it is an extreme example but see how things affect people differently chico xavier used to go go to the corner pub Oh, well, should drink his coffee, but should be there in that difficult environment where people go to get drunk. Oh, day absolutely. after day, because somehow he wanted to improve the atmosphere of that no, place. Oh, yeah, I told you, it's not about everyone doing this particular thing. Yeah. There are many advices there. Exactly. It has one thing. So if uh, if this is probably some people don't even care, they're not affected about yeah. this. Exactly. But the point is there are many different things that can be done. They're very easy. This for yes. me was something that yes. was affecting me very much yeah. and it was easy to do. And there are many things that each person has one thing that could be done perhaps to improve their lives. Exactly. And we that's, don't. Yeah, the completely. Completely. you're giving an example of something yeah, that was easy example. for you. It uh, works and true. actually, it, it, it's, it would be the same for me as well. But you see, there are people that they, they just do not connect with that. And the people so that they work with that, it, and they're fine. It, it doesn't fine affect them. them. It doesn't affect them as much as it affects us, it doesn't stay on their mind. And therefore, they are not connected energetically speaking in the sense of top wavelengths like we, we are. 
you know, for instance, in my case, everything started because I could not stand any kind of cruelty that would be done to children. And every time that I would get a, you know, a Time magazine, Veja magazine, or uh, watch some news that would imply any kind of uh, abuse of children, that would stay with me for weeks and weeks and weeks and would make me feel very, very bad. Maybe I'm guilty of something, you know? <laughs> I never thought about it, but yeah. Okay, <laughs> give my hand to <laughs> palmatoria. How do I say that? I don't know. And uh, but you see, uh, so it, it starts with that and uh, other things, other types of uh, uh, crimes and negative actions. So I said, well, I, I cannot, I cannot go through that. It was coming to a point that when I, I still used to read some magazine. If there, Juan would read that first, my husband would read that first. If there was any kind of things, notice that would be disturbing, he would rip the page off and said, oh, I took the page, so you are not going to be <laughs> Okay, and just the idea of knowing there was something here, it didn't, it didn't bother me because I, I didn't get, get into the, the action per se. But, but yes, there, uh, I, I mean, I think that the point that Barbara is, is bringing us here is that uh, exactly what you wanted to answer is the main message here is pay attention to yourselves. Although, like Sonia was saying, we cannot disconnect from our loved ones. We want them to oh, be happy. Obviously not. We want to help them and and especially when we are talking about children we give our lives to them right yeah i, I didn't mean to say that disconnect from problems no 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 i understand no, i no. mean for politics completely yes. take me yes. out of my so i disconnect of politics absolutely yes. because i find it to be disturbing some yes. people know my brother-in-law works with politics and he loves it so that is fine but I, it's what you're saying you couldn't you couldn't, uh, you can't see things that are related to child abuse or things like that. So each person to know and actually do it instead of yeah. torturing yourself. Exactly. So the main message here is, you know, pay attention to you, to your thoughts, to how you react, to what you have that you can be in control of. Uh, and sometimes, like Barbara said, it can be something simple. Maybe the world will not understand. Uh, I, I, I feel that all the time because I also don't want to listen about politics. <laughs> um, <laughs> my last president went away four years ago, so I don't even know who is president now. I don't care. <laughs> I ignore the fact completely. And, and you see, the thing is, uh, there are a few things that we can do to prevent us from harm. And it is what, what she presented here in the lessons. Just don't allow yourself to be overtaken by them, be in control, because otherwise it's just going to affect you. In the process, not only we are going to get better, but we will be uh, making others around us better as well, because there is no way that our impact are not, I mean, the impact of our transformation is not resonating on them. It's not in the speed that we would like. Let's keep us, us being hopeful and praying and knowing that it will come for them the same way that it comes it came for us and just keep on doing the keep up the good work okay so um i guess that's it for today <laughs> hey, can i say something oh, sure okay then about john and angeles because every week we are studying and many times the vocabulary is not easy, the lessons are deep, 
then we travel inside ourselves with these deep lessons and touch our soul. But she always, in the end of the chapter, she gives us the door open. Yes. She always gives the way we can take to be a better person to solve that situation we are involved with. Mm -hmm. Then it's always a hope in our life. Every lesson. Yeah. This is what I'd like to say in the end of our meeting today. This lesson is a hope in our lives. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. Philip, could you do the final prayer for us? With appreciation for the lessons of the text, we give praise to God and the guiding spirits. And we take a lesson from what each of us says because there is much that we can incorporate in our lives that will make a big difference for how we deal with the challenges of life. And we in the United States do not have problems at a level that the rest of the world is dealing with. So let us not only focus on what is true for us here, but focus on being of support and help to others around the world that are in dire straits. With reverence to God and Jesus, we say we are grateful. Thank you very much. So be it. Thank you.